Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. So today I'm going to talk about what I've wanted to do for a while, which is putting together a pure DOS computer. And I was going to use my 486 uh, Visa Local Bus motherboard, but unfortunately I think my video card is non-functional. And I think any of you fellow retro computer enthusiasts out there realize that um, ISA style video cards are A, scarce and B, expensive. I'm still searching for a good replacement card. Um, I had a number nine um, Visa Local Bus card. I tried to insert some additional memory into it and I think I shorted it out. And that's on me. However, I thought, okay, so I want a pure DOS computer. I want something that's not that fast because I'm going to be doing some some retro gaming uh, DOS games from let's say 1990 through the mid 90s and I want a motherboard that I can put additional chips in to speed things up maybe change the memory out get some different video cards in something that's period specific and like I said isn't a racehorse compared to a 486 well back in 1998 I purchased this which is an A6 TX97, it's a TS97 LE motherboard. And I was stationed in Germany at the time, and I picked this up, had it shipped in from Newegg, and this thing just, in my opinion, fits the bill. So it's a socket seven. It's one of the it's one of the first socket seven type motherboards. And the thing about this motherboard is it has our ISA slots, which I do plan to use an ISA sound card because you get the most DOS compatibility with those generally. It does have PCI. It has both kinds of power connectors, all right, ATX and AT. And it has both types of memory, all right. Now, I do plan to use SD RAM memory with this. I do have... Um, an old 32 stick out of an old compact. All of these parts, by the way, I scrounged or I purchased myself. So, you know, none of these are donated. None of these are anything that I've been given by any company or anything like that. So I've got 32 meg stick out of an old compact computer of the SD RAM that I plan to use. All right. And that should be plenty for any DOS or Windows 95 applications. Then, as far as the CPU, I'm going to start out with the Pentium 75. Now, the Pentium 75 isn't going to be very much faster than what I intended to use with my 486 motherboard. The intent with my 486 was going to be using a combination of um, a DX33, an Intel Pentium Overdrive 83 megahertz, which I'm proud to be an owner of, but I can't use it right now because the motherboard isn't working, and um, an AMD 133 megahertz 486 clone. So I'm going to use the Pentium 75 for starters on this, and I have a wide range of Pentium chips at my disposal for my scrounging. I'm going to use a period original heatsink that came off a board that had a Pentium 90 on it, and the interesting thing about this heatsink, the fan's still nice, is the Pentium chip slides into this, okay? And then what happens is we ratchet down the fan right here, and that tightens the heatsink against the CPU and creates a good bond. Now, I, I, I will put paste in there. I just wanted to demonstrate how that works. Genius. And then, of course, once we're ready, that'll go in our socket 7. I plan to add a uh, PS2 port for a keyboard because this board does come with the DIN barrel type keyboard connector. I only have one keyboard that'll fit that and it's missing some keys. Um, I plan to add this. This actually came with the motherboard. So I have all the parts that came with the motherboard. That'll actually plug in right here. 
And then I plan to add an additional serial port. And that'll plug in here. So, let's talk sound card. Now this is the fun part. I have a couple of these bad boys, and this one is a Diamond Multimedia model, I don't know. I can't find out much info on it. Um, Diamond Multimedia sound card, and it's got a crystal chip on it. And I do plan to use this for my sound card. I debated throwing in my Sound Blaster 16. I may switch up the Sound Blaster 16. I may do another video on the different sound cards and the, how they um, do the FM synthesis and how the sounds are, how, the, how they sound, excuse me. I also have a couple of Diamond Monster sound cards, one with a wavetable. But I thought I would start out with what I consider the most retro card, and that'll be this Diamond Multimedia eh model. Video. Two choices. I have a generic Trident video card with a half uh, meg of RAM on it. I also have two additional memories, but since uh, I blew up my other video card, I don't think I'm going to use those on this one. Um, so I was either going to use this, just keep it simple for now, and then what I might do later on is add my Diamond Stealth 3D2000, which uses the S3 Verge chip. One of the first true 3D accelerators. Um, this was also referred to as a, a 3D decelerator uh, for some games and some applications when it first came out. Um, I also obtained this myself. And uh, this is Vintage 96. I think I got this in 97. Finally, I'm just going to use an adapter, which will let me use a memory card in lieu of a hard drive. I've got a 2 gig micro SD card here on an adapter that I'm going to use in here in lieu of a mechanical hard drive. And we'll see how that works. It shouldn't be an issue. DOS doesn't care. Windows 95 might be more sensitive. We'll find out. We'll do another video, I think, uh, putting Windows 95 on this platform. And then we'll do some benchmarking. I also have the original manual for this motherboard. It is available online. I'll, I'll say one thing for Asus, folks. Um, Asus has all of their motherboards from, from day one online, with BIOS updates available, with a lot of drivers available for these. And um, this, this bad boy has everything I needed to get my jumpers correct. Because what I needed to do was that I needed to change frequency jumpers, voltage jumpers, and then I needed to change the manufacturer of the CPU type jumper. So I had three different jumpers to go through. Nine jumpers to change just to tell this bad boy to use my Pentium 75. And um, that's where we're at right now. I just wanted to show you guys what I'm going to be putting together. I'm going to do some DOS retro gaming. And then I'll also do some benchmarking. This board will accept Pentium 75 through 233, including MMX. It'll accept the Cyrex chips, the Cyrex PR series. I do have one of those. I do have a PR166, which does overclock on this board. It accepts the AMD K5s. I don't have any of those. It accepts the AMD K6s, of which I do have a 233, which does clock up to 300 on this board. And then it does accept the uh, K6-2s. So... Going to get some fun out of this motherboard, put together a system, and when it's all put together, we'll do some more videos, and uh, I appreciate everyone joining in this morning. So I did put paste on the heatsink on the CPU, and I'm going to go ahead and swap out in this old-style CPU case, uh, computer case.
I also wanted to talk pretty quickly about uh, the other things I'm going to add to this DOS computer. Uh, one of which I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I'm going to add a Sony 8X CD-ROM. Just to keep a simple CD-ROM. I also have the original install discs. We'll see if those still work. With the DOS and Windows drivers for this CD-ROM. I'm not going to use a standard 3.5 inch floppy. I'm actually going to use an LS120 super drive. Uh, this is 120 meg, what they call a floptical. So it's a floppy optical drive. And this one I believe was made by Mitsumi. And I'm down to my last 120 disc. So this is 120 megs of optical storage. As you can see, it is backwards compatible with three and a half inch floppy disks. I can boot from it. This motherboard's BIOS does support booting from LS120s. And the interesting thing about these drives, so um, Clint from LGR did a review on these. He had one, and I believe it was a parallel port drive. Uh, this one actually is an IDE version. So it hooks up with a standard IDE cable, a floppy power connector, and then we have jumpers also for uh, slave or primary. And then we can also connect the CD-ROM drive on this. So we're really only using one IDE connection on the motherboard. We don't have to worry about, you know, a separate floppy drive here. We don't have to worry about separate channels for the hard drive or for the, um, the CD-ROM drive. So what I plan to do is I plan to hook up the hard drive and this on the main, and then I plan to hook up the CD-ROM drive on the secondary IDE channel. And again, what's always helpful with these older computers is if you can get a hold of drivers. So we do have the super disk drivers for Windows once I go ahead and install that. I do have uh, Crystal Sound Card drivers. I got these from Vogons. I'll probably do a separate video or put a link in the uh, description about Vogons. Uh, Vogons is a repository of all good things retro when it comes to uh, PC computing. And uh, there's a lot of old drivers available there. So these are generic Crystal Sound Card drivers. And then I also uh, am repurposing some older disks. Uh, I have the Logitech Mouseman drivers. I will be putting, like I said, a PS2 standard mouse on this with the ball system, not an optical mouse or anything. And I will be putting that on there. This motherboard does support USB, but I won't be installing any of the USB as none of the operating systems that I plan to use anytime soon will actually be compatible with USB. Not until I get into a good Windows 98 install. Even though Windows 95 uh, Service Pack 2 does support that, um, I'm actually not going to use the uh, USB until I get into Windows 98. So, all right, with that, I'll go ahead and finish my assembly, and then um, I'll go ahead and record the first boot. Hopefully everything works well. All right, here's our first boot. And nope. Uh, looks like we've got some issues with the hard drive and the floppies. Uh, let's go ahead and set up the hard drive. All right. Reboot. Everything seems good. Everything shows up. Set up DOS 6.22. Going with DOS 6.22, um, aside from the DOS 7 that comes with Windows 98, um, this is the most modern, complete version of DOS. Uh, it also has the uh, MemMaker which will allow us to uh, put drivers in the high memory, free up more DOS memory for running some programs that are sensitive to that. Reboot. Now let's go ahead and install the sound card drivers. This is the generic, um, what they call the crystal audio drivers for that sound card. All right, let's see if the sound card is working. So far, so good. test all right 
the sound card is working. Again, those are the generic crystal audio drivers. Um, we're going to go ahead and save these settings, accept them. We're going to let it alter our config system auto exec batch files. We're going to do this for all of the device drivers that we install. Uh, that way we don't have to do anything manual on these things as far as editing those. Quick reboot, install the mouseware drivers from Logitech. Quick reboot. CD-ROM drivers. And a quick reboot. And let's go ahead and do MemMaker. Free up as much of the DOS memory, 640 and below as we can. Get the device drivers up there in high memory. Get some XMS and EMS memory. Everything seems to be loading okay. Everything seems to be working. Yes. We'll accept that. And let's install Quake. Does it run Quake? Sort of like the crisis of the mid-90s. Does it run Crisis? Does it run Quake? Quick install off the CD-ROM drive. Load it and run it. Everything seems to be working. Let's go ahead and run a quick time demo. Time demo 3 with no sound. See how many frames per second we get in software mode. I think our resolution here is like 340 by 200 or by 220. Pretty low res, but again, this is a Pentium 75 with 16 megs of RAM. Again, that was not a 32 meg stick. I thought that was a 32 meg SD RAM, but it wasn't. 15.7 frames per second in software mode. I want to thank everyone for joining me. Again, TX97LE running pure DOS, old school style. And um, hang in there.